Have you ever wished you had an air conditioner for your computer? As the self-proclaimed air conditioner computer guy, today we're gonna to review just that, an air conditioner designed for your computer. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones or just get them for yourself. So I was, I was contacted by a company called Cooling Style and they're known for making chillers in all sorts of different applications. They make chillers for 3D engraver, like laser engravers. They make rack mounted chillers for servers. Uh, a ton of different applications. In fact, in fact, I'll put a link to the description or in the description down below to their company. Um, although they did send this over, it's not any sort of like a sponsored deal. I just thought it was interesting and neat because as somebody that has hooked an air conditioner up to a computer quite a bit, this is kind of unique in the sense that it uses the same type of heat exchanging process that you would use to, you know, cool down air, only it's doing it to the fluid itself. So it works in the same way as an air conditioner would, like say in a car where all the air is running through coils and through a, a heat exchanger that's gonna extract all the heat out of the air. This is advertising that it can get your system down below 10 C in one minute. Now, I feel like, first of all, calling it an air conditioner is a little disingenuous. There's some marketing on this that I'm not a fan of. And the reason for that, it's already scratched. The reason for that is the fact that it's a chiller, not an air conditioner. You're not conditioning the air, you're conditioning the fluid that's gonna be flowing through it. So let's go and open it up and take a look at it. I also wanna point out when it arrived, it did, it did come soaking wet. And you can still see there's some fingerprints in where we were trying to clean it off. The sides already got these like, find scratches and stuff in it. The anodizing on here is not exactly the best. I don't know how to explain it. It's a very industrial type product, but if it's designed to be sitting on your desk, obviously it needs to be um, appropriate looking. So on the inside, you can see right here, it's got a very similar reservoir that we would see for a computer. Um, it's got a very, what appears to be almost like a DC, uh, DDC pump We've got a thermal coupler right here. So this is just gonna measure the water temperature because it does have a, what they call self-driving. I don't like that term. I think that's just, again, another buzz term they're putting in their website. In fact, if you look at their website, there is a ton of fluff and filler text in there that just has nothing to do with the product whatsoever. It's, it's actually pretty bad. Uh, but anyway, I digress. It's neither here nor there. This is the temperature probe here that's going to tell the, the Controller inside what the temperature is of the fluid. That way you can set it. If you don't want it going max cool, let's just say you want to set it to like, I don't know, 19C, 18C, 20C. Typical, in a room that's uh, about 28C or so, which is what, uh, mid, low 70s um, Fahrenheit. Coolant would typically run under load somewhere around 23 to 27C, depending. So you could set the coolant lower, level lower than that. And then what you're gonna end up getting is obviously sub-ambient cooling, because if you go too far below sub-ambient, you're gonna end up getting condensation, a lot of condensation buildup, which is actually why the tubing they provide to you, which is very, very stiff, like it is probably the stiffest tubing I've ever seen. It is quarter inch, by the way. So uh, I would have preferred to see at least three eighths inch on there for better flow, but they, it does have this insulation wrap on there, which will help contain drips and stuff to the ends of the tube. <laughs> so if it's on the PC side and dripping out of there, that's bad, keep that in mind. I did actually get different softer vinyl to use probably instead of this stuff, just because that's something that stiff, it's really hard to fit over the barbs. Moving on, two 120 millimeter fans on the back right here on the heat exchanger, which is essentially a radiator, but for the Freon, that's gonna be flowing through the compressor right here. It's a little mini compressor. Um, it is sitting on these rubber standoffs and then they shoved a whole bunch of like memory foam rubber stuff underneath it as well. That's, this is to stop vibration. And then this looks like this is a filler bleed port right here or whatever for the Freon. This is a rubber fitting right there that has to make quite the bend to come back through. And then um, on the front right here, this is a controller. Two intake fans on the top, which are RGB, I'd like to point out. This is RGB, 
So you can see on the top right there, fill port to fill the fluid because this has a self-contained pump as well. This doesn't need your PC or a closed loop pump in your system moving fluid. It's gonna all happen on here. Brings cold air in through the top, brings it through the heat exchanger, exhaust hot air out the rear. So before we move forward, let me, let me tell you about some of the ways that we're gonna move forward with this. Because I have a couple of objectives here I want to figure out. One, and this is the power supply right here for it obviously. One, does it work? Is it going to be able to take a CPU or a GPU? It, it, it's up to 500 watts of thermal cooling capacity. Now there's a difference between thermal watts and power consumption watts, by the way. That's like the difference between actual package wattage and TDP when it comes to measuring a component. These fans appear to be very delta-like. If you look at the blade pitch, they are 30 millimeter fans instead of 25 millimeter. So my concern with this is how loud is it? That's another point I wanna look at here because on the website it says quiet 55 decibel design. 55 is louder than any system I've built. I just wanna say that right now. So if it's sitting there on your desk, that's gonna be pretty annoying. You would never use that if you're live streaming or if you care about your, your ears. Um, and what's it gonna sound like? Is it a motor hum? Is there a squeak? You know, what, what's, cause compressors, make clicking sounds and as they're going because they're compressing, it's like a piston kind of a deal. So what's that gonna sound like? And then my other major concern with this, how much hot air is gonna come out of the back of this? Because you already know your, your, your computer, that is a massive heat load inside of your, your space or your room or your office or whatever it is, which is why we had a crap ton of air pumped into our new office because of the amount of computer that we're putting in there. So there's a thousands of watts of heat not just our body temperatures and the environment itself, but all the computers and stuff when we start doing full testing and whatnot going into this testing season, there's gonna be a significant amount of heat that can build up in that room. So if you're in a small eight foot by 12 foot bedroom that you've turned into a gaming room or it's your bedroom that has your computer in it and stuff, you've got a TV and all that sort of stuff, one little AC vent supplying air into the room, how much heat's coming out of this? Because I feel like if this is on your desk, you're just gonna be having a, the armpit under boob sweat time of your life if this is putting 500 watts worth of heat out the back. And then the last thing is gonna be, um, could we just omit this entire design by having a portable AC unit like I showed, cooling the entire space, including the computer, rather than taking the heat out of the component through water, through the chiller, out the back into your space, causing an, an, an ambient temp increase. We have to fill it, we have to plumb it into our test rig, which is a 10900K, I'd love to use a 12900, I don't have a, working 12900 right now that I can put a block on, but 10900K, I'm curious, we're gonna start with just the AIO. We're gonna see what the temperatures and stuff look like under load. Then we're gonna hook this up with all the same settings. It is overclocked, just the CPU. And then we're gonna see what the temperatures are, what the noise is like. You got a little digital readout, so you can turn it on and off. Settings, plus and minus for temperature settings. And then off you go. In terms of the design though, and the quality, some of these, are kind of loose, like they don't, see that for the power plugs? That's not very comforting. Looking at the back, cause I forgot to show you. Power plug, on off power switch, and you're in the outlet fill, which is kind of funny because the compression does nothing because it's so much bigger than the tube. Like it doesn't, it, it will never compress. And no, it, you don't compress down on the insulation. That doesn't fit in there anyway. So it's like, you're just gonna have to thread that on and use a zip tie or something and it's very stiff to try and get on there to hope it doesn't leak because the compression does nothing. So this is an Intel 10th gen 10900K running full load right now instead of bench R23. At one point, it's auto voltage, but it's going like 1.45 volts on the vid for the most part. Um, if we look at the clock speeds, where are they at? Right there, 5.2 gigahertz all core. This is a pretty decent chip. And uh, you can see our package temps at 74, 75 C, and we're averaging high 60s, low 70s in all the cores. Side note, does that show you how terrible 12th gen is with temperatures? Because that's pretty significantly better than 12th gen. Even 11th gen's great. 12th gen's, ugh, oh. Hashtag pray for 13th gen. And this is just using a Fantex 360 AIO right now. With the fans not even set to very high. They're, just, they're actually at a fairly low speed. So you could, I mean, the temperatures on this are 
perfectly fine. In fact, this might have been a better test for 12th gen because if you look at the package temp, it is pulling 275 watts from the package. So it's not any more efficient necessarily than 12th gen, it's just better at dissipating the heat. So I need to let this run now until it maxes out, uh, which is probably gonna be about where it is now, to be honest. We'll let it go for like 10 more minutes, see where it maxes out. And then we will hook this guy up. I'm just gonna take the block off. I'm gonna put, of course, I have to put the Jay's Two Cents Edition water block. I almost held it to you upside down. The Jay's Two Cents Edition water block. This one's all scratched. It has been through hell because we have been kicking this thing around the studio so much. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's got RGB in the inside, RGB in the outside. It's got this neat kind of a um, forged carbon look to it. It is faux forged carbon. It's not real forged carbon. I'll be charging like $400 for it. But anyway, if you guys want one, link is down below. But yeah, we'll be hooking this up to it. And then we'll show you the filling process and. I have not turned this on yet, so this whole video could be derailed if it doesn't work, which also makes it just as important of a video because then you saw that it didn't work, but we don't know that yet, we're assuming. Couple of side notes. One, it comes with a type I plug, at least our unit did. So I don't know if you buy through their website and you put in there that your shipping address is North America, if they have North American plugs or regional plugs ready to go, or if they're just using type I because of the fact that it is coming from the Asia market. So. I mean, I, Australia and New Zealand also use Type I. I highly doubt this is coming from Australia and New Zealand, considering the back has Chinese writing all over it. So fortunately, this end is universal, which also means it comes out of the box already set to 230 volts with this uh, power supply that's in there. Fortunately, it's switchable. So I was able to switch it down to 115 watts by just using my little pick. All right, so we're pretty much done climbing here. Um, package temp is staying right around the same. The cores have risen to the mid 70s. Uh, Coldest core is core nine at 70, and then the hottest core is core four at 70. <laughs> you can't write this. <laughs> that is like the first time this system has like ever crashed. I know. Anyway, we got the temps. That's what matters. <laughs> I'm not changing the settings, I can't now. It was the EMF of my electric personality that did it. All right, we're plumbed up. I used the um, insulation they provided. You can see here, I just went with brass fittings. Holds air, should hold water without leaking, hopefully. I'll just have paper towels handy in case there's a small drip there. Um, inlet to the block, outlet on here. Actually, it's just outlet. Outlet. Now, obviously, this tubing may not be long enough for your application, their, their insulation anyways, because remember, you still have to make it from here into your chassis. But I just wanted to point out, I'm also not doing a GPU in the loop because I just wanna kinda keep this test as straightforward and one testing component as possible. 500 watts should be enough to cool a GPU and a CPU, but you saw the, you know, CPU is probably 120, 130 watts worth of heat anyway. So I'm gonna power this on because we still have to fill the rad, fill the tubing, and fill the block. So it's gonna take multiple fillings, I'm sure. What happens if I just turn the power on? It's immediately RGBing and going, just like I thought. That's a lot of noise. That can't be the entire... Oh God, it's wet everywhere. It's not sealing on there. <laughs> it all stayed on the block. See, the J's Two Cents block also works as a perfect bowl to hold all your water. Okay, I need to get a way to seal that. <laughs> I still advocate for water cooling, okay? I just advocate for using the right fittings. Okay, it appears to be holding for now. <laughs> Imagine that, using thread tape on fittings that are actually designed to have thread tape. So let's talk about the fittings real quick. They should have provided quarter inch barbs designed for a PC. They're like $3 retail. Okay, actually more like $6 I think retail. Every single computer component these days is G quarter thread. And that's exactly what the threads are on, you know, the, the block and the radiators and the pumps. And there's no reason why they couldn't have provided you two barbs, ones that are shallow enough with O-rings to seal so you're not dealing with Home Depot fittings with graphite thread tape on there. Considering how much this costs, we'll talk about that in a second, gross undersight, or maybe intentional, I don't know, from cooling style on that. Are we starting in F14? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. I mean, it is set to max speed right now. You can control, it appears you can control it. We are still dry up here. There's no droppage. Okay, I'm gonna turn this. Look how fast it's coming down. 
So we need to keep an eye on that. That's going up two degrees. So this is air coming out the top right there. That's air coming out of the heat exchanger on the back. And this is the fluid temp right here. Oh, it's slowing down. I'm wondering if because it's at max temperature right now, like it's at room temp and we have it set to just probably whatever. Oh yeah, set temp is 15 C. Okay, so as it's approaching 15 C, oh, there's a nasty point in the RPM range of the pump and the compressor where it gets super noisy. We can set it to 6 C. Sick. So the flow rate of the pump is, the flow rate of the pump is 1.3 liters per minute. Dude, look at the core temps, 14C. Just run one right now, see what it goes under load. 48, 51, 50s. High 40s, low 50s. Oh, well, you can tell it went under load. Oh yeah, because look, the temp's rising because it's now under a heat load. So it'll be interesting to see how well this thing can maintain under a constant load. Dude, the whole table's vibrating. The whole table is vibrating. <laughs> look at the voltage. There's less voltage required though. I'm testing this in the everyday use case scenario where someone's not gonna necessarily go in and like voltage tune their whole system. Or they're not gonna go in and lock their voltage either at a certain volt normal, most of the time, they're gonna set either an offset or leave it on auto. So if somebody was just to plug this into their system, put it into a CPU block, leave it on auto, what's gonna happen? Well, less voltage, look at this. We're also seeing about 20 watts, almost 30 watts less on the package temp. Again, that's because of the lower voltage. Okay, 1.408 volts because it's colder, as we've already talked about. Same package wattage, it's dropped to mid 50s again. A couple, that one core is upper 50s. So drop from 62 and upper 50s down to 56 because of the fact that the coolant temp dropped from 13.9 with our flawed test because we had the a limiter set we didn't realize. So 9.1C when it's all out, balls to the wall, max cooling capacity, it's, this is where it's landing. There's, there's something that's important to keep in mind too. If we look at the temperature on here, 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit, that's pretty warm. If we go back to Celsius for everyone else, 32 degrees Celsius. This room is big enough with a 10 ton air conditioning unit cooling it. The, room in, the temperature in this room is not being affected by this. However, in a small bedroom, the temperature will be affected by this. And as the temperature in the room goes up, so will the temperature of the unit because the air coming in through here to cool the heat exchanger has heat, higher heat capacity in it. Well, excuse me, heat already in the air because the air has been heated. So there's less efficiency and then that will continue to rise and eventually it will find an equilibrium. Basically what we've done with this test because of the type of environment that we're in, we have seen what is the max cooling capa capability of this unit if nothing else is affecting it like having the room temperature slowly increase. I've already said, as the room temperature increases by 1C, so will the temperature of the water, because it's a perfect linear ratio at that rate. So if the room ends up being 32C, whereas right now the room is 21C, it's 11C hotter, you could expect this to be potentially 20C water. So you gotta keep that in mind. What I wanna do now, because we have it set to 6C, which is the loudest mode, because as you can hear, it is very loud, very warm air coming off the back. We're gonna go to auto now because, whoops, I think 11 or so C, there, is where it wants to go with auto. And the reason why it's gonna do that is it's gonna find a, a, a period at which the noise isn't as intrusive. Looks like it chose 9.9 .9 C for auto right now. So it's slowing itself down. I almost preferred it running full speed than hearing that wow. See, it wants 10.2 now and it's at 11.3, so it's gotta speed up. And the problem is it looks like it overshoots. So if this is the set point, it's gonna be doing this the whole time. It's gonna be like a sine wave. There's no way you could have this on your desk and have it not be like totally just intrusive. Okay. Neat concept. I like when companies are going this route of trying to try new things. I'm not sure there's anyone here watching this video that agrees that the price of an RTX 3080 is worth this. For the 20 or so C that we saw, you know, thermal difference. And that's the early bird price. I have no idea what the regular price is gonna be. I mean, this company makes, like I said, server grade stuff. 
They also make a backpack you can wear. It's like a full cooling system for your body. That's gotta be battery powered. Who knows how long that could actually last, but I'm sorry. Um, cooling style, it's, it's a neat idea. This is just never going on my desk. <laughs>